program director, fellow panelists, as well as uh, ladies and gentlemen. On the 19th of July, 2018, the CASNET passed into law what we have always known to be the true character and reality of Israel. Israel is an apartheid state. For us as South Africans, our experience of apartheid was defined by the following key defining characteristics. Statutory discrimination, past laws, Group Areas Act, labor reservations, as many black people were sent to homeland reserves, separate and unequal development, land expropriation at all costs, movement restrictions, such as the war, a military state, roadblocks, and random searches, assault on one's dignity and human rights. All these characteristics were present in apartheid Israel since its inception, but have now been codified and given a constitutional status and expression by the nation law. Apartheid Israel perpetuates statutory discrimination through the very definition by the nation law as a Jewish state. By doing so, it renders non-Jews as secondary citizens, alternatively as foreigners in the land of their birth by virtue of who they are and who they are not. Although Israeli Jews and Arab Israelis already had different national identity documents that defined them as such. The nation law further emphasizes that differentiation even in Arab Israelis, and I say that in inverted commas because it is the origin, original sin of stripping Palestinians of their historic roots have to apply to go to their ancestral homes once exiled to the West Bank and many horrific stories of students from Gaza who have gone abroad to study have been denied the right to return or they have to go through virtually impossible hurdles to obtain permission to return home. In some cases, people wait as long as eight years for responses to an application and many are still denied. In defining the Zionist character of apartheid, Israel, the nation law affirms the large scale of theft of land, farms, homes from Palestinians who were forced into exile by programs and wave after wave of massacres since 1948. Such actions merited Nuremberg in the aftermath of the Nazi Germany and the Truth, Truth and Reconciliation Commission in South Africa after apartheid. Entire towns, villages, and neighborhoods have been stolen and usurped and stripped of its ownership, character, culture, and language. These are now defined as Jewish areas in the same way that apartheid South Africa attempted to redefine District 6, Fiatus, Sophia Town under the Group Areas Act. Through defining restriction, uh, re restricting and reserving the Jewish character of occupied Palestine, the nation law therefore reserves all economic opportunity, trade, work opportunities in such areas, and hence is no different from apartheid South Africa's labor reservations policies that perpetuate unemployment, economic hardships, and suffering for Palestinians. The nation law unapologetically advances the separate and unequal development of Jews and Palestinians in Israel. The practice of Afrophobia, even for the Jews of African descendants, is a matter of public record. The nation law provides legal and statutory justification for land expropriation, which has continued unabated since 1948. 
and in fact lays the groundwork for the annexation of the West Bank and the total usurpation of the entire city of Jerusalem as the capital of apartheid Israel. The South African apartheid state developed Bantu stands, which I'm one of those people that were located in the former Transkei to advance the movement restrictions by blacks and pass laws to limit their entry into white urban towns. In the Cold War era, the Berlin Wall was a symbol of a similar movement restriction. Apartheid Israel's grotesque wall took this to another level, cutting huge swatches of Palestinian land, dividing homesteads, separating families, destroying productive farms, uprooting agricultural stock with olive trees, grove hundreds of years old, being disseminated, all in the name of movement restrictions and separate development under the guise of safety and security. With six million refugees, thousands of political prisoners, and a growing internal popular protest of the nation law provides further ammunition to apartheid Israel's character as a military state. The final dream of Israeli Zionism can only be achieved through what we call the state brutality, roadblocks, and random searches. Even accounts by Israeli opposition, academics, and the Jewish left regard the nation law as an assault on the dignity and human rights of not only Palestinians, but other minority groups. The nation state law is an expression of Arab-Israeli conflict, which remains unresolved to this day. At its most fundamental expression, it is about the colonial character of Israel. It perpetuates the myth of the land without people for a people without land. It is for this reason that section one of the law, which defines Israel as a historical homeland of the Jewish people and an exclusive grants the Jewish people the right to national self-determination in the country. For us as South Africans, we are clear on this matter. Israeli is an apartheid state. And to us, all of us who have experienced the brutality of apartheid South Africa, this is the worst form of apartheid we have ever witnessed. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Salma.